a second and he kept wheel spinning, only for a short amount of time. Oh god. Anyway, <laughs> what's up guys? Welcome back to the GT3 and today is another one of those monumental occasions which I'm beginning to become a little bit embarrassed about actually. New car collection days are happening unreasonably often right now. Um, it's just the way it's landed. This car that we're collecting today, which I'm sure you've guessed from the uh, thumbnail in the video, has actually been on order for about six months. I know that sounds a long time for an Audi, uh, but I went and spec'd it in a special colour, which I think is what took a, a long time. It was supposed to be a four month older frame, uh, and in the end it ended up being uh, six months. So, I got the call a few days ago, and I'm now travelling down to West London Audi to go and collect a new RS6 performance. I won't go into too much detail now because we're yet to go and see that car, but rest assured, once we get it, I'll be giving you many thorough updates on it, daily drives, uh, yeah, I will see what that car is all about. So, without further ado, let's do it! James Barb Miller from Audi West London and James is the manager of Audi Sport and he's very kindly taken his time out of his day to show us around the RS6. Let's do it. Fine. No problem at all. So this wonderful Merlin purple and uh, yep. exclusive paint so uh, Audi will paint a, a car pretty much any colour you like and it's really amazing. Really. Um, so it looks so stunning. Uh, and, uh, I've yeah. not seen it in this car before, so no? really no, not at all. No. And loads of detail on the outside of the car we can talk about, um, mm -hmm. and plenty on the inside too. But it's the performance model, so you've got yes. some uh, just a couple of detail upgrades. You've got the 21 inch wheels and the specific performance design. Um, we've got them in the gloss black, mm -hmm. which look fantastic. Uh, we've got the full exterior carbon styling pack on the car, so that gives us the full rear diffuser in carbon. Uh, you've got the black exhaust pipes with the sports exhaust in this car. And then coming around this side, uh, you've got slightly smaller at the rear and huge at the front, the carbon ceramic brakes. The reason I upgraded the brakes was obviously it's a very fast car anyway, but with it being the best part of two and a half tons, I thought ceramic brakes, probably a good thing for a performance car of such weight. Absolutely. Just because of that, yeah, who knows? The last thing you want is brake fade on something like, like this. So. They're, well, they're light on the standard, so it takes off uh, weight off every wheel when you're, when you're yeah. turning a corner and you're braking, accelerating, it takes off yeah. um, weight from the car. It takes two, me two weeks to make a set of ceramic brakes. Um, just one or full, full set? Um, the full set. I full think, set. I, actually, I think you potentially even each disc, but each disc is tested to destruction before it goes on the car. They're not just manufactured, it's a huge wow. process. Okay. Um, and a lot of discs fail. Which is why okay. it takes so long and why you probably so why they're so expensive. Exactly. <laughs> right. yeah. Okay. It's, a, it's an amazing process. Okay. Uh, and then around the front of the car, uh, you've got the black detail which comes with the carbon pack. Mm -hmm. You've got the carbon splitter, the quattro badge down the front, yes. and uh, just the air vents on the sides. Right. And then hard to see on camera probably, uh, but we've got the two big circular uh, areas uh, okay. or uh, units down the bottom of the quattro, so which look like fog here. lights, but they're yes. not. Okay. So those are the radar for the adaptive cruise control. Okay. And the pre-sense system, which is the automatic braking. Yeah. And then just below the Audi rings is the front parking camera, just between the number plate and the rings. And tucked in the middle of the rings, which you can't see on the right-hand side, is the infrared night vision camera. So okay. it's just loaded with, with kit. You've also got the Matrix LED headlights. Okay. Um, so on top of being your regular bright LED light, uh, yeah. the Matrix lights, the camera by the rear view, rear view mirror at the center there, yes. um, operates the LEDs individually according to what's coming 
towards you. Okay. So it can move individual ones according to the movement of other cars on the road. So right. you get maximum main beam down potentially one side or either side of another car. Wow. Um, okay. But Fantastic. it will not bother other people. It's very So cool. each individual LED can operate separately. Operates independently. Can do, yeah. Yeah, according to what the car can do. Works out. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So and that allows you to still have beam on, but it'll yep. divert some away from oncoming yep. traffic. Let it, let it move it around. That's mad. That's clever. That's the dream though. Because there's <laughs> the amount of times I'm like dipping on and off. You know, but if you can maintain a beam as well, that's incredible. Yeah, because it will move it. On a motorway, it will just go miles down one side, but then keep off the other side of the other carriageway. It's fantastic. Amazing. All right, so next step inside. So just some cool functions that we wanted to, uh, to show you. Um, yeah. We've got the, a couple of bits of equipment on the car which are um, pretty special. So you've got the head-up display. Yes. And uh, that should be on right now. If you can see that straight through the windscreen in front of you, James, it's a zero can. MPH. So if you can see that. I can see it, yeah. Lovely. And there's an adjustment on that. So I'll just, if you just hold that steady, I can show you. It moves up and down uh, yeah, so you yeah, can move it to where you Amazing. are comfortable with it. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, wow. And as well as speed, that will give you information on uh, navigation information when it wants you to make a turn. Okay. It's coming up for a, a junction or whatever. Um, and it will give you uh, cruise control speed and things like that as well. So it can hold nice. other information on there as well. In front of you here, mm -hmm. um, we've got uh, oh, the night vision. Night so vision. So that's currently set to ship <laughs> computer. Yeah. But uh, there's a bit of daylight in here, obviously. But if we just yeah. push that, we go to night vision. That's the so that's the infrared. Thing and there's heat in there. So what I'll just do is walk around the front of the car Okay. and hopefully you should see uh, me and, and my uh, yeah. shape come across and you'll, you'll see what it does. All right, great stuff. Whoa, that is, <laughs> that is the craziest thing. It's like some science fiction happening here. It's mad that you can even say that there's night vision in your car. And then when you've got things obviously much further away when you're driving, much, much yes. bigger distances away, it will pick out those shapes of people okay. and highlight them in boxes on the screen for you so you can see what's out there. Yeah, um, yeah it's Perfect. really, cool. really cool. Great feature. It's great fun. So the thing that's most worth talking about here is car, which okay. is all of the non-entertainment settings. Um, but all of the performance settings and that side okay. of things on. Because you've got loads of technology, so that's all stored in here. Okay. Drive Select allows you to vary uh, the behavior of the car, the feel of the car. So you've got three main settings there on the left, and then individual on the right. Mm -hmm. So comfort is exactly what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Gentle suspension, kind of lazy gearbox, light yeah. steering, cool. no, no sports exhaust. Okay. Uh, okay. Auto is normal. Um, it will respond a bit quicker to what you do, mm -hmm. but it's still pretty normal, as you'd, as you'd expect. Okay. And then dynamic is sport and, and what it sounds like. So dynamic will immediately put the gearbox into sport, it will turn on the sports exhaust, it will firm the suspension, it will tighten the steering, um, nice. and it changes the uh, sport differential for the quattro as well. Right. So dynamic is the other end of the scale. Okay. And then an individual okay. is, yep. um, is great. So you go to set individual, mm -hmm and you've got six things here that you can vary yourself. Wow. Yeah. So if you want your sports exhaust on, yes. but you don't need firm suspension all the time, because sure. it's not necessary, yeah. then choose what you want. So you go down to engine sound and you go to, oh, well, other one, go to dynamic. Yeah. Um, you might say, I want the steering to be sporty all the time. Okay. So we go to that one too. Nice. And uh, the sport diff will just give you slightly uh, more power to the back of the car. You've got to okay. be pushing it to do that to really, sure. really feel it, but yeah. it, will, it will speed up an outside rear, rear wheel okay. to push nice. you around the corner and make the car more real. All right, first stage of the handover is done, but of course we are on the third floor of the Audi West London building on the Audi Sport floor. And of course there's no other way to get this car up or down than by a car lift that goes through the whole building. Well, what a spectacular place to collect a car from. On the third floor with a fantastic view of London, and here it is. James is now about to drive the RS6 into this lift, and then we'll uh, scoot on down.
Miles, thank you so much, mate. It's been brilliant. Pleasure. 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 Thanks for showing us around the uh, car as well. And it's amazing to pick it up from such an incredible building. And also, thank you as well for just showing me downstairs just to get a scale for this place. You were saying earlier that this is the world's largest Audi dealership. World's largest Audi centre. Yeah, seven wow. floors. This is, uh, it, it is insane. Brilliant. It's, it's huge. Place. Yeah, very cool. And, and awesome as well that you have a dedicated floor for Audi Sport. That's great. Yeah, we're very, very lucky. Obviously, yeah. it's, a, it's a great opportunity for us. So, yeah, very Fantastic. Lucky. All right. So, now, uh, yeah, have a bit of a drive home, but uh, <laughs> shouldn't be a chore in Enjoy this. It. It'll be Enjoy great. It. Yeah. You'll be just fine. Okay. Yes. Thanks very much. Pleasure. Cheers. No problem at all. Okay, here we go. This is the first turn of the wheel in the RS6 performance. Bad, I've been waiting for this car a long time. It's so quiet. I mean, especially after driving down in the GT3 and getting in this thing. It's like, honestly, a few weeks ago I drove the new Rolls-Royce Black Badge. The first thing that jumps to mind is that car. It feels like that car and it sounds like that car. And when I say sounds, it doesn't sound like anything at all. <laughs> it's like fresh air. Wow. It's a beautiful place to be. But don't get me wrong, we're just scratching the surface with this thing. Obviously right now it's in comfort mode, the exhaust is quiet, and I've been told now several times by several people, and I've even read it myself, the importance of running in an RS6. I don't know what it is, but there's something about the RS6 which they say is essential that you bed the car in before giving it any proper stick. The salesman earlier was telling me that even the first two hours driving this car are important in terms of bedding in of the engine and then you have to take it really steady for 500 miles. After that towards a thousand miles it's progressive and after a thousand miles you can get on it. So right now I'm not going to be able to rev this thing out and hear the exhaust and things like that but First impressions are that, I mean right now I'm, I'm doing 20 miles an hour and the torque, you can just feel this thing just wants to go, it feels like it's on a leash, you know, it's being reined back. Just the slightest depression of throttle and it surges. <laughs> I can't wait to get this thing running, it's going to be ridiculous. So just a quick overview, obviously once this thing is bedded in I'm going to do a full first drive video where we go into it a lot more, play with settings, hear the exhaust because I know on the overrun these things pop and bang like a pack of Rice Krispies. So just a quick few details on what the RS6 performance is all about. Well as the name suggests, performance it's increased predominantly in horsepower and torque. Um, horsepower, we've got 45 brake horsepower over and above the regular RS6, which takes this thing to 605 brake horsepower in your family saloon. <laughs> Standard stuff. Um, and of course, with this being a turbocharged engine, Audi have only had to breathe on this thing uh, and it gets 553 pounds feet of torque. Like, you could twist an oak tree in half with that. Someone's gonna have to relay tarmac as I'm going along because the twisting force of that is just mad. That's more than the F12. That's just, just trying to put that in, into context. What is going on with cars these days? So, yeah, right now, even though we are cruising along, we are wafting along on what feels like a beautiful cloud of air, underneath this thing, it is a wolf in sheep's clothing. And in fact, that's not doing this thing justice either because let's face it, the sheep's clothing bit isn't all that true. This thing looks so chunky. It's Arnold Schwarzenegger in the good days. What else is quite nice is every other car I film in, I find my myself shouting in order for you to hear me. I know lots of people have commented, why don't I get a proper microphone? The thing is, I like to immerse you guys in the experience of being in these cars. And if I was to put a microphone on, you would only hear me. You would barely hear any of the um, car. So yes, I do shout, but also you get a much better feeling of what it's like to be in the likes of a GT3 and a 675 LT. Conversation is elevated. In this, I can have a normal chat. I don't have to elevate voice. 
It's very cool. Right, straight road. Oh. I mean, I am super short shifting and it's just, I can feel a nice swell in my back where it's pressing me gently in these seats. And, the, and, and speaking of seats, these seats, I mean, the interior is absolutely stunning. You only can picture these things in your head. Obviously, when you go and order a car or research a car, you go online and you look at as many specs as you possibly can to try and envisage what it'll look like. But it's not until you lay eyes on it. And there's also something about laying eyes on someone else's car and laying eyes on your car when it's the realization that that's your car for some reason, it just becomes a whole load more special. When uh, James pulled off the cover off, off that car, I was, oh man, it just puts a massive grin on my face. It's just such a special experience. Anyway, guys, I wanna save the chat about this car for the first drive video, because no doubt I'm gonna be covering a lot of miles in this thing really soon anyway, so we shouldn't have to wait too long. Um, but yeah, let's save it for then. We can hear the exhaust, we can check out the performance, and also we can bed in these carbon ceramic brakes. I cannot wait. As always guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Ciao!